Hello, my dear friends. My name is Dr. Z. I am a clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel. If you are new or have not yet subscribed, please go ahead and make sure you subscribe. That way you support me and help everybody else find this valuable and free content. And if you don't yet follow me on Instagram, the link is below. Please make sure you also do so. That's where I show up daily, tips, guidance, advice, and weekly Q&A. So definitely a place to connect with me is going to be Instagram on a daily basis. For today's video, I would like to discuss with all of you three major signs that may be an indicator that you are on the wrong path. Oftentimes, we talked about a lot of signs, a lot of factors that may be positive indicators that you are on the right path, because I know that for a lot of you, this idea of making a mistake, this idea of moving in the wrong direction can be quite anxiety provoking, can be quite scary, can be quite terrifying. And so a lot of times we spend talking about, again, things that indicate that you are moving in the right direction. Well, today I wanted to also share with you some of the things to watch out for that may be potentially indicators that you are on the wrong path altogether, or in the very least, it is an indicator to slow down, or it is an indicator for you to, you know, just take a little bit breather, observe, figure out why some of the things might be popping up. It could be that there's alternative explanation for all of those things, but it also could be that it's an indication that, you know what, maybe it's time to take a pause, maybe it's time to reassess, and maybe it's time to really figure out whether the direction you're moving is the optimally best direction for you. So the first sign out of the three signs is this. You are, you started either gender transition or some kind of gender uh, exploration elements and as a result of starting out, whatever starting out is for you, it could be exploring, it could be starting to present more, it could be starting hormones. If you feel that as a byproduct of starting out, your dysphoria goes up, if it drastically increases, that is something to look out for. Now, with this sign number one, there are two little, I would say, um, I would say two little possibilities. It is, first of all, very common to acknowledge that when you are starting out, your dysphoria might go up naturally because you are doing something about an issue that you've been dealing with for a long time. So naturally, for a lot of people, dysphoria goes up. It also could be that now that you're out there and you're presenting more, you're being more yourself, you're being more social. It could be that this photo also goes by because now socially you're more exposed, so to say, and that makes you uncomfortable. Maybe you're not ready yet. Maybe imposter syndrome comes up or insecurity feeling comes up. So a slight increase in dysphoria is natural. If you are on a right path, usually what happens for people is Dysphoria might go up a little bit, and then as it goes up a little bit, euphoria also starts to go up. And this combination of slightly increased dysphoria and slightly increased euphoria, in a way, cancel each other out, at least to the extent where both are manageable. For people who are on a wrong path, euphoria, there's an absence of euphoria, so that's another thing you want to look for, absence of euphoria, and just constant presence of dysphoria. And no matter what you do, dysphoria is still very strongly present or it has just increased. This is going to be especially important for people who have started hormones and as a result, you feel a very drastic increase in dysphoria versus a decrease. So again, I want you to keep in mind that some increase in dysphoria is common, but we are looking for those combination factors of dysphoria and at least some element of euphoria. When it is a situation when dysphoria um, is present, it's increased, but there's absolutely no euphoria, nothing about the steps that you're taking makes you feel euphoric, that's something to reevaluate. That could be a very telling indication you are on the wrong path. In the very least, it could be an indication to take a pass. So that's sign number one. Sign number two, your anxiety, your sense of stress, your worry, your fears, all of those things go up too. 
Some of you are already anxiously prone individuals, and for you, that means your anxiety just went even higher up through the roof. Those of you who are not anxious at all, uh, or very slightly anxious, you notice that, whoa, what a second, I'm more anxious than ever. So that's something to watch out for. Now, again, as with the first sign, some element of increase is going to be common. Why? Because you're stepping into the unknown. You're finally doing something that gave you a lot of fear in the past. And because you're doing it for the first time, you're going to be naturally stressed. You're going to be naturally anxious. What we're looking for here is continuous effects of anxiety, continuous effects of stress, your fears are being increased here. You're even more scared of making regrets or making a mistake. If all of those things exponentially go up and there's no positive counterpart to them. For example, again, at the same time, you feel like you're on the right track. You feel euphoric. You feel great. You feel affirmed. If there's nothing to counterpart it and it's only negative, 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 that's also a telling sign. Notice how with both cases I'm pointing out uh, this ability to have the counterpart. With all of the three examples that I'm going to share with you today, we're looking for that counterbalance, right? Um, that's what happens for a lot of people. A lot of people went from complete disbalance of lots of dysphoria, discomfort, insecurity, overwhelm, fear, stress, anxiety. And when they start taking little steps, what happens with them is that we now have a counterpart of positive things, such as alleviation of dysphoria, euphoria, anxiety goes down, they feel hopeful, they feel joyful, they finally are able to see their future. Um, all of those things become counterpart. If you don't have anything to counterpart and you're just feeling worse and worse, Again, red flags, red flags, red flags, and I really want you to watch out for them. The third sign that you might be on a wrong uh, track or you need to take a pause is your overall, um, you overall feel even more confused than you were before. You feel more uncertain, unsure, less affirmed, more insecure about your gender identity. Remember, all these little things you're doing are supposed to make you feel more short, bring up your confidence, make you feel affirmed. And ideally, the combination of those factors make you feel that you are moving in the right direction. Well, if you are going in this direction and you find out that as a result of taking the steps, whichever ones for you, going on hormones, uh, sharing your pronouns, um, expressing yourself or modifying your gender role, you feel even more confused and conflicted, that's also an indicator. Again, if there's nothing to counterpart it, right? If you're only feeling increased confusion and increased doubt and increased insecurity, that's an indication you are not on the right path or you need to in a very least take a pause. All of the steps of transition, no matter how small or large, whether they're tied to social, medical, or surgical transition, all of them are structured and aimed and has been shown continuously to bring up a counter up for people. That's how people keep going, right? That's how people know they're moving in the right direction. If people did not feel the counterpoints, nobody would continue with gender transition because you're just basically digging a bigger hole for yourself. So I want you to look out within the three things that you just worry go up and is there a counterpart to it being euphoria? Did your anxiety and fear go up and is there a counterpart of also feeling um, less anxious, feeling like you know where you're going? And did your more confusion go up and there's no counterpart to having more clarity? That's what I want you to look for. I want you to look for that lack of equilibrium. Now, things will never be equally, complete equal, but we are looking for that kind of shifting of the scales from where you started at to where you at. Now, why is this really, really important to do? In the very least, if you're experiencing one of the three or all of the three, it's really important to, in the very least, to take a pause, to stop. Remember, you're still in control of your life and you're in control of your transition. And stopping 
is the best thing you can do because it allows you to reevaluate things. It's very prudent. It's very smart. Uh, it's it's just very very important to stop and to reevaluate. I see this among, I see this more among young adults and adults. This phenomenon where young adults feel that there's this pressure, right? Oh my God, I came out and now if I stop, if I take a pause. My family, my friends, everybody thinks I'm a fraud. Everybody's going to think that I'm even more confused and clueless because if you're sure, you would never stop. Never, ever, ever allow somebody else's projections, somebody else's ideas or thoughts, especially people who don't know what they're talking about, influence your decisions. Trust me, you do not want to be on a wrong train just because you were afraid to get off because you're afraid that everybody else is not going to take you seriously. You need to take yourself seriously. I also see this phenomenon sometimes with older adults too. Again, it's this pressure, um, this fear that I started and now there's this expectations. Stop it. I, I really, really ask all of you to stop and to be very, very careful and very mindful by not allowing outside pressures, outside ideas to confine, restrict, and box you in in something that you are not. Pausing, taking a pause is the best thing anybody can do. Now, I know I did a video about losing your momentum and how it's important to keep going, but that's for people who are on the right track. If you are having all of these three signs, chances are something is not going in the right direction. And you need to figure out what it is that is not going in the right direction. And you owe this to yourself. So keep in mind, if these three things happen or all of them happen in combination, increased dysphoria, increased anxiety, increased confusion, take a pause, think it through, see what kind of clarity you might come up with, maybe work with a gender specialist in your area or some kind of therapist to get some clarity. Maybe if you are really bombarded with a lot of information out there, Reddit, Facebook groups, you name it. Try to take a step back. Give yourself some space and time to clear your head and to see things more clearly. Comment below. Let me know if you experienced any of the things. What did they tell you? How are you feeling now on your path? Where are you headed? How do you know you're headed in the right direction? And I will see you all next time. Goodbye.